Now let's take a look at problem number 19. In problem 19, we have three parts. Uh, we want to calculate these three limits. First of all, we want to calculate the limit as x goes to 4 from the right of x minus 5 over x minus 4 quantity squared. Second, same problem, the only difference is we're going to calculate the limit as x goes to 4 from the left. And then finally, we just want to calculate the limit as x goes to 4. Okay, so let's take this one piece at a time. First of all, let's look at part A. Part A asks us to compute this limit as x goes to 4 from the right. So what I need to ask is, okay, can I plug in 4? No, I cannot. If I plugged in 4, I get 4 minus 4 on the bottom, which is 0. Division by 0, that's bad. So the next question I have to ask is, is there going to be a factor on the top of x minus 4 that I can cancel this x minus 4 with? And x minus 5, there's no way I'm really going to factor x minus 5 and get an x minus 4 to cancel. And in fact, I have two x minus 4s down here. I have an x minus 4 times x minus 4 because this is an x minus 4 squared. So I would need two of them on the top to cancel the two x minus 4s on the bottom. That's not happening. So we know that what's happening at 4 is a vertical asymptote because there's no factor of x minus 4 on the top to take it out. Okay, so now that we've already diagnosed the problem at 4 is a vertical asymptote. Now we know that vertical asymptotes things go to positive infinity or negative infinity. There's no in between. It's the answer to these problems is either positive in infinity or negative infinity. And I know that because I've already diagnosed the problem as a vertical asymptote. So now the, all the, this boils down to is I have to figure out, well, which is it? Is it positive infinity or is it negative infinity? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a number slightly bigger than 4. So we're approaching 4 from the right, so take a number slightly bigger than 4, and I ask the question, okay, what does that do to the top and the bottom if I plug in a number that's just slightly bigger than 4? So something slightly bigger than 4 minus 5, well, that's a negative value, right? Something slightly bigger than 4, like 4.1 minus 5, is negative. I'm just going to remind myself of that by putting a negative sign on top. Just to remind me, the top is negative. On the bottom, if I take something slightly bigger than 4, well, something slightly bigger than 4 minus 4 is positive and something positive squared is positive, so the bottom is going to be a positive value. So I have a negative value on top divided by a positive value on the bottom, which we know is negative. So the answer here, since I know that the answer can only be positive infinity or negative infinity, in this case, the answer must be negative infinity. Let's look at part B. Part B, I want to do the same thing, except I want to approach 4 from the left-hand side. So if I'm approaching 4 from the left, I can say, okay, let's take something slightly smaller than 4, like 3.9, or just something a little bit smaller than 4, and subtract 5. Well, that's clearly negative. If I take something slightly smaller than 4 and subtract 4, that's negative, but then I square it, and anything squared is going to be positive. So I get a negative divided by a positive, which is negative. So the answer must be negative infinity. Part C is asking me, what's the limit as x goes to 4 of this thing? Which means, do the right-hand limit and the left-hand limit, do they agree? And in this case, the left hand and the right hand limit do agree. They agree that they are negative infinity, so the limit as x goes to 4 must be negative infinity.